Tonight, our first speaker is Kathy. Help me welcome Kathy to the stage. Hi, everybody. Welcome. My name is Kathy, and I am an alcoholic. And uh, congratulations to all the people who picked up chips. When I first came to AA, I was very young, like you guys. My sobriety date's March 26, 2003. But um, my first meeting, I was 26 years old. And um, I kept trying to do it my way. I didn't want to go to treatment. Um, I married a man in AA, and I had two children. And my excuse was, well, I can't go to treatment. I have these two, these two boys to take care of. And um, years of... of um, of really pretty much just being a dry drunk. Uh, I'd put time together, but it really wasn't what sobriety is really about. Um, and then finally at the age of um, 44, I, I, I really, really hit a bottom and I became willing. I became willing to go to treatment. Um, and in treatment, I didn't. I didn't want to do anything that they told me to do. We had we had those phone privileges, and I can remember, uh, I'd get on the phone with my husband, and I'd say, "When this 28 days is up, I'm out of here." And then when it got in back in Florida, it was always 28 day programs. And when it got closer to the time for me to leave there, I said, "You know, do you think you could get my family to help with the kids?" Because I had finally started to, I had finally become willing enough and open enough that I, I was really starting to learn about the disease of alcoholism and what was wrong with me. For all the years, when I first got here, I thought I'd never have fun again. I thought, you know, how could you have fun if you can't party? And one of the things that I did that um, held me back is I was always flipping the um, alcoholic card or the drug addict card because I like to do both. And what the truth was is I just didn't want to, I just could not imagine life without having something to do to take the edge off. I just couldn't imagine that, and I couldn't, didn't, I, and I just thought that, well, this is it, fun's over. It was like being doomed. And um, once I started getting serious about um, my recovery, things changed. I got in the middle. I got service positions. I, I work the steps with a sponsor. Um, I like to mention this because it's held me back a lot. I know we read in the big book, Defiance is our number one characteristic, and it still is just slapping me through the face, that defiance. And uh, in step one, it says we, um, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol, and then there's that dash, and that our lives had become unmanageable. And, you know, I could admit, finally I could admit that I was powerless over alcohol. And that, that was like the, the allergy part of what happened when I drank. When I drank, all bets were off. Uh, by the time I was 26 years old, I drank two tall buds every morning just to stop the shakes to go to work. Um, and, but what, where I got stuck a lot was after the dash that our lives had become unmanageable because I didn't really, you know, I, I, I wasn't a low bottom. I was more like an emotional bottom. I didn't lose my husband, almost did. I didn't lose my children. I didn't have DUIs. There were a lot of not yets that hadn't happened to me, but people convinced me that, yeah, you just keep playing around with it and, and it will happen. Um, I never stayed sober through anything. Any big deals that happened in my life, I always use it as an excuse to get drunk. Um, and what I wanted to say about that second half is, is of the first step is what I'm really learning is that um, the, you know, the unmanageability is about what goes on up here. It's about the stories I tell myself. Uh, one of my favorite stories that I used to tell myself was, and it talks to me in my own voice, it was, oh, maybe I was just going through a phase. Maybe it's going to be different now. I have never picked up a drink or a drug that it was ever any different. I, I always had those same old terrible guilt, shame, and and really knew that I didn't want that kind of life, but 
I just couldn't seem to muster the willingness to do the work. And um, I, I'm going through the steps again. And, and the reason I brought up def defiance is I got this, um, my lessons that I was supposed to do for the steps. <laughs> and I read it and I, and I wrote everything down because I don't remember anything. Um, I and and wrote it down, and then when it came, we, I went to meet with my sponsor to sit down and do the step, do the work that I was supposed to have completed. I didn't do what she told me to do. I had it all changed around. You know, I didn't do that consciously, and that's what I'm talking about. You know, it's one thing for me to stop drinking, but if I took the big book and sat and read it, and and every place that it talked about drinking. I put the word thinking in. You might try that exercise sometime because it's a good one. It it's really is a good one. My disease centers in my mind. I wake up with it every morning. Um, it tells me things that aren't true. It creates stories. It loves to make mountains out of molehills. The sky's falling. Um, I mean, I've experienced all of that. And what I know about treating it on a daily basis and doing the things, you know, t taking a little time, taking some time to pray, taking some time to read, whether it's a 24-hour book, some type of little meditation book, uh, write prayers down for other people because that gets me out of myself because, you know, I'm a very self-consumed alcoholic. And um, the only way that I have found to recover from that is to be of service to others is to take care of, stay sober myself and to be available to help other alcoholics. It's the only, it's the, and it is also the thing that keeps me spiritually fit. If I, if I do those things, I call it getting my God on in the morning, then I, I'm pretty spiritually fit and I can, no matter what happens that day, I'll be able to find my pause button. When I don't do that, that pause button has totally, has disappeared. Um, I was three years sober, and I had a, I haven't uh, when I started to say I never went through anything and stayed sober through it. I used it as an excuse. I was three years sober, um, and I had an older sister that I used to get high with. Um, we partied together for years, and I even helped her get into treatment, and it was like the greatest two years of her life. And um, I was out on a Saturday doing all my errands because I worked Monday through Friday and had got my women's meeting in, ran home to get a nap because you work Monday through Friday, you want to chill on the weekend. And I got a really strange feeling. It was like if everything was wonderful and the inside of you was bright yellow, it went black just like that. And I got up and I st start and I'm headed out the door and my husband pulls in the driveway and he goes, where are you going? I said... I don't feel good about Camille. I have a very odd feeling on the inside. And uh, he goes, well, get back in the car. I'll go with you. And we got there, and um, my, my sister was in respiratory failure. She lived 11 days on a ventilator. You know, I used to think that, um, I used to not really think, I didn't think that alcoholism, you know, when I first got here, I didn't think, oh, it's not a big deal. It's not a big deal. Well, yeah, it is a big deal. It kills people. Um, this, this past year, um, I had a major bump in the road. Um, I had to have a double mastectomy. I am just um, had, bre I had breast cancer surgery in November. And uh, like I said, I used anything like that, I would use it as, as a way to get high, as an excuse, and say, well, if this happened to you. And, you know, um, yeah, drinking was my thing. But I've relapsed many times on what we call in Florida solid alcohol, which is just pills. Uh, of course, with this surgery, I had to take pills uh, because it was a major surgery. And I have a husband in recovery. And you know what? I very graciously said, you take care of the pills and give them to me as they're prescribed. Because you know what? I can't trust this up here. I can't trust it. I, you know, I know how many times it's led, it led me right back out that door. So what I'm working on now is, is building a character that God smiles down on and he's happy about having a relationship with God that's beyond my wildest dreams and having a character that's 
that's strong enough that I can be, um, you know, a great member of Alcoholics Anonymous, be here to help other people, and have a message of hope. And um, that's, I guess that's really all I have to share. My, uh, m my sponsor's speaking next, and you're going to love her. Thank you.